Hey and welcome or welcome back to my little film and TV channel. We're going over to Netflix today to look at a Japanese horror drama. Yes, one of these um, repeats itself. The day repeats itself because something has to be accomplished. So it's one of these science fiction type things. I'm going to have a look at something called, well, it's also known as Remember Member, but probably just as easy to, to know it as Re Slash Member. So we're going to have a look at that today. Please, if you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button, push the bell notifications. Great to have you on board. Everything film and TV, reviews, information, vlogs, uh, the odd quiz on special occasions, stuff like that. So if you can spread the word and enjoy it, please, uh, please please do so, yeah, let's spread the word, and if you can give us a thumbs up as well, guys, I'm trying to get about 15 likes for these film and TV vlogs, which are not a high target, but if you can help me towards it, I'd be very grateful. All right, yes, this is classed as a 15 certificate, which, yeah, it's, it's fine, it's fine, it's a little bit gruesome in parts, 102 minutes long, and it's about a high school student Asuka and her friends, of course, she's at school and sees the apparition of a dead student named Haruka. Yeah, you do get a sort of backstory to this right at the start of the film. Asking Asuka to find her body. Asuka and her friends attempt to find the eight scattered pieces of Haruka's corpse in the school and learn more about this red person ghost that took Haruka. Uh, not very pleasant at all. The red person hunts students who are alone at school to kill them and until they exit the school gates the red person will keep appearing before them. When the red person kills a student it scatters the student's body into eight pieces, lovely, and tasks another person to find a piece in the school. If Asuka fails to find Haruka's body, the day will repeat over and over and she and her friends will keep dying until they do so. It's all about getting the pieces so and getting all the pieces put together so they can they can get on get on with their lives but uh, it's obviously not as simple as that. These scores and comments are all at, all at the 5th of March 2023. Internet movie database, job public, over 1,500, nearly 1,600 scores and reviews. Just 5.1 out of 10, so about halfway there, not quite the 6 out of 10 we like to see. The Rotten Tomatoes audience, very similar, 5.4 out of 10 with a 46% positivity. If you go on to the critics themselves, they're very similar actually, a little bit lower if anything. Uh, there's nothing on Metascore, so we'll just have a look at Rotten Tomatoes. Uh, literally just six critics have watched this or deemed to watch it. And it's only getting a 33% positivity rating. Rotten is Roger Moore. He's rotten on this. He's from Movie Nation. We go to Roger a few times. He says, does just well enough by a killer concept to merit a Hollywood remake? Because this version stumbles here and there and simply falls at the finish. Marshall Schaffer from Decider website said, Remember does not bring anything new to the time loop concept, nor does it particularly satisfy as a teen movie outside its plot gambit. And yes, there is a fresh uh, Kate Sanchez, but why though a geek community uh, website says, Remember captures the early aughts and the manga death game genre expertly, bringing out nostalgia with its embrace of horror tropes and more. So, yeah, it is like there are people who liked it. On to my little thoughts on this. I do like these quirky things, these you know, versions of Groundhog Day, which obviously is this sort of classic, but obviously for me, this is a sort of. I would compare, say, to Happy Death Day, if you've seen that. There's been a couple of those, haven't there, which I quite enjoyed. I quite enjoyed that, but this certainly isn't up there with it. Once you get past a few gruesome killings, there's little in this to appeal. The dubbing is fine, as I said, and the ideas behind the film do, do pique your interest, certainly for the first 30, 45 minutes as you try and suss out what might be going on. But nothing really expands the story that much Okay, the monster killer morphs into another type of monster killer and there's an attempt at a love story, an explanation of sorts for the events happening. There's just not enough, though, in a, in a 102-minute film. It possibly would work uh, with the setup as an episode in a, in a horror anthology series, something like that, but you're talking 30, 40 minutes. Uh, unfortunately, we have to sit through an hour and 42 minutes. It's obvious that money's been spent on this, and there are certainly all the elements there to put in a, a scary teen horror and does attempt to do that. So, as I said, I watched the dub version. The acting was, was quite good. I imagine the actual original Japanese would be quite good as well. But 
Well, sadly, the horror just isn't isn't clever enough. The plot isn't just clever enough to keep you interested for the full length of the film. And my interest in it sort of faded fast, and it all got a little bit repetitive for me. So yeah, that's why I give it just just a five. I am going to give it a score because it's not a total disaster, but it's just just a bit mm, a bit of a letdown in the end. As I said, in, interesting, lots of gore, but the gore gets a little bit repetitive. Uh, and silly in parts, uh, yeah. Certainly, the final final three or four chapters get get a little silly rather than clever, and and it does set it up. Does set up for a sequel, of course. It does. If you carry on watching past the credits, but uh, you might not get that far. I'm not too sure. Let me know what you think, guys. Anyway, it'd be great to hear from you. Until we meet again, last one thing, don't I? Please stay safe, everyone. Bye for now.